God is true, that the Father is watching you right now, and the angels of heaven are rejoicing, as the Bible says, the angels of heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents, and then, uh, then over 99 righteous that uh, don't need that. So this is a moment uh, that you will remember, especially the fact that it's very cold. You will never forget this day. <laughs> so this is a moment. Uh, that you will remember, especially the fact that it's very cold. You will never forget this day. <laughs> so this is a moment uh, that you will remember, especially the fact that it's very cold. You will never forget this day. <laughs> I will never forget this day. This is the third baptism in this freezing water. But uh, uh, it's going to be an amazing time, guys. So uh, just, uh, we're going to pray, and I want you to pray with me, calling on the name of the Lord, call upon the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Father, Lord, we recognize, O oh Lord God, that, Lord, you are the Lord. You are the Lord of Lords. And create this place that we're standing on. Let consecrate this place that we're standing on. Let it be holy ground, Father God. And I and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you other elders scattered abroad, and you Akiam, salute to you and to the few sisters and the followers, and mainly we say shalom to the elect. Okay, I want to go in this video here. Um, Apostle Tahar did a response. I'll get to the points um, of this guy, David Lynn. Right? He seems to be a danger to society, man. He's actually doing baptismals, baptisms in the frigid cold temperatures. Frigid. Now, what's crazy is there's a reason why he's wearing a big winter coat some <laughs> big ear muffs and some long fishing boots right to keep himself warm there's a reason why you put on that stuff but somehow he's telling people to take off their clothes and go get dunked i mean they're having their regular pants and their thin shirt on and telling them to dunk themselves in a, in a frigid lake you look at the background there's a bunch of ice there's certain animals that can deal with that kind of weather. We were not meant to uh, go and get dunked in these cold, in these cold, frigid temperatures. Okay, if you're going off the war or whatever the case is, that's different. There's certain circumstances, you know, even in the ancient times. But to literally get baptized and where is that in the scriptures? You know, <laughs> you know, the weirder the doctrine. You know, the weirder the doctrine, the more the people are going to follow. Okay? The weirder the doctrine, the more the people are going to follow. Next, have a big Jesus hanging on a cross and have red Kool-Aid pulling out his wrist. Right? And tell everybody to come up there and, and uh, let the, the Kool-Aid pour on him. And claim it's the blood of Jesus. I guarantee you, something weird is next like that, man. 
if they don't hear this video and get a new idea. And that's all these guys do. They get these weird ideas, right? They get these weird ideas and then come, um, and then they come up with something new, you know, for, um, to captivate the people. Let's go to Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 and 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses, lead captive silly women, laden in sins, laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. And that's these guys, you know. We can see uh, this is what they do. This is what they do. They come up with these new hooks, new schemes, and new, new scams because the Christianity, the Christian church is falling apart. You know, I remember being younger. I went around with this uh, with this group, you know, where, where I was staying at, and they had this so-called polar bear swim. And you know who mostly showed up for that? It was all mostly so-called white people up doing that, man. Big, heavy set white men, you know, <laughs> with they had a hot, lot of hair on them, man. They the ones was doing that. You know, I was very young, and I kind of jumped in that cold water, man. Because I was a good swimmer. And I wound up getting sick. And nobody else did. You know. <laughs> so you have no business. Taking your clothes off. Dumping and jumping in frigid temperatures like that man. Frigid water. Okay. So then is these diverse lust man. These Which is numerous lust. Right. Just a, a, a number of different lust and deceit. This is crazy. So, well, and, and I'm going to get into the baptism, baptismal, the baptism, because didn't the one you called Jesus died for our sins? Yahweh For the Israelites, let me get that too. Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we are to obey Yahweh rather than men. Okay. We are to obey Yahweh rather than David Lynn. The God of our fathers raised up Yahawashah, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. That's why it's, it doesn't say cross here. It says a tree. Because that's what it, you know, you had what you call the crooks. Well, it was like a form of a cross. But you know, the Roman Catholics, they made it look the way they did or whatever. Anyway, it says, Him have Yahweh exalted his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. So, if Yahweh never came and John the Baptist was baptizing, then yeah, we would still need to be baptized and dunked in water. But the whole purpose of John the Baptist, his whole purpose, his mission was to baptize uh, Yahweh, the one you call Jesus. Right? That was the ultimate baptism. Just like him dying on the cross, uh, or the crooks, or we, you know, we say cross. Was the ultimate uh, um, sacrifice. Right? So then you have people practicing afterwards. So if you practice these kind of sacrifices. And these kind of uh, baptisms after Yahweh You're crossing them out. It's almost like he never existed. Or he came to do it. And remember everything he did. He took the physical and made it spiritual. Like John the ninth chapter with the blind man. And he made him see. Well, guess what? When we out here, we're doing these lessons. We're calling to you so you can see. We're not literally taking mud and putting it on your eyes and snapping our fingers and telling you you can see now. Right? It's just that simple. It was a spiritual thing. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians um, uh, 1 and 17 for Christ. You say Christ, Yahweh this is Paul, sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not to wisdom of the words, lest the cross uh, of Yahweh should be made out of effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishly, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of Yahweh. Right? So we should be dealing with the Spirit. There's other scriptures on here that said that goes into that he, you know, is it's not about the baptism. Well, it is about the baptism, but about the washing, with the washing of the words. You know, I forgot where it is, but it's in the scripture, maybe in Ephesians. 
talks about the washing of the words okay so ultimately that's what the whole point of the uh, you know the baptism is so let me go to baptize baptism and let's go in the new I mean in the New Testament that word is immersion or submersion okay um, verse uh, of calamities and afflictions which one is quite overwhelmed it says of John baptism that purification right by which men on confess confessing their sins were bound to spiritual reformation obtained the pardon of their past sins and became qualified for the benefits of the Messiah's kingdom soon to be set up. This was valid Christian baptism. As this was the only baptism the apostles received and it is not recorded anywhere that they were ever rebaptized after the Pentecost. Right? Um, a Christian baptism, a rite of immersion, immersion in the water See, the water rep represented being cleansed, right? The water represents being cleansed. But it was always physical, ultimately spiritual. When he, when he said these parables, you know, certain things he said. Like I said before, when he hit, you know, took the mud and put it over the uh, blind man's eyes, right? The dirt put over his eyes. It was represent being covered and then him, you know, through the spirit cleansing you. And his miracles. Right? So there's a lot of things that were done that was physical, and he was what, what Yahweh Shah brought was the spirituality. You know, that was the whole, you know, that was his mission to die for the nation of Israel. And ultimately, all that was for to bring uh, uh, the spirituality. You know, saying that we can conquer death, we can conquer the flesh. That's what that was all about. Matthew 24 and 24, for there shall arise false Christ, false messiahs, right, and false prophets, and shoot shoo great signs and wonders. That's this guy. That's a great sign and wonder, getting out there in that cold, him nice and warm, he's nice and warm, but telling you to get dunked in those frigid temperatures. What if somebody got a heart defect, man? Right? What if somebody got a blood clot? You don't know the health of some, some people. You got to be smart, man. These people are going, uh, uh, and we're supposed to go on faith. But these, you still have to be smart. So these people are going solely on the faith of Christianity. If he could set a big fire up, and they'll just try to walk through the fire. It says, in so much that it were possible they should deceive the very elect. You know, that they would deceive the very elect. So anyway, I didn't, you know, I don't have much to say on this. I just thought this was really weird. Like I said, the weirder the doctrine, the more the people come. The stranger the doctrine, the, the stranger uh, these little tricks and gimmicks are, the more, the more people come. You know, people love gimmicks. So let's go to this word gimmick. This word gimmick says a trick. Or device used to attract business or attention. It says an ingenious and usually new scheme or angle. <laughs> ingenious. Okay, let's go to ingenious. Okay. Um, it says marked by originality, resourcefulness, and cleverness in conception or execution. Okay. Showing or calling for intelligence. Having or showing unusual aptitude for discovering, inventing, and contriving, right? And contriving, when you look at that word, it says a devise and a plan, a stratagem, uh, uh, to form or create an artistic or ingenuous matter. We just went to what ingenuous meant, right? Which meant having, uh, showing. Uh, a new resourceful invention clever, with cleverness. Okay, so that's what this guy is. That's what this guy is. He's a slick guy. And I remember, these Christians always say that, that they're going to start going into the blue letter, which they've already started. 
and they're going to start learning from us and they're going to start going into history and they're going to try to find new ways to bring in a doctrine because you if anybody remember especially as little older you know and old enough to know you went back in the christian church they never went into history they never went into uh you know all you know the, the stories or they may some of them may have known the stories but they never went into history the the time zones the the nationalities you know and all that made sense the heritages the israelites notice they always ignored the israelites in the christian church nobody never spoke of israel except when they thought it was the people that was in that land today that's all i have on that shallow one